Gypsy's man messaged Nina to come to the bar that he works at for drinks. Nina declined, he got mad and blocked Nina and Gypsy got mad. My man wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole. Gypsy Rose herself messaged me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I am really shocked uh, about her messages. So looks like you're the one that's panini pressed. Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her feuds are escalating. The drama is explosive. She's not only fighting with TikTokers over her man Ken, but even past collaborators. So now people in the industry are turning on Gypsy. Actually, Gypsy Rose and her family tried to take it legal and sue with a restraining order, but ultimately they seriously failed. So let's get into it. We all know that Gypsy Rose Blanchard has made quite the splash since her release from prison, but I did not anticipate all of this drama. We're talking divorce. We're talking about getting back with her ex-fiance. We're talking about her feud with a TikToker named Nina. And this beef has gotten pretty bad. I mean, we saw Gypsy out on her TikTok saying that Nina was panini pressed. So looks like you're the one that's panini pressed. Now, Gypsy is goofy for that one, but let's get into why she is feuding with Nina. Now, I had never heard of Nina prior to this, but Nina posted about her feud with Gypsy on March 12th, claiming that while she was on live, she was talking about Gypsy and her relationship with Ken, who, keep in mind, Ken is Gypsy's ex-fiance, who she's now back with. Nina apparently did some investigating of her own and found out that before Gypsy announced her split from Ryan, Ken was commenting on Gypsy social media posts calling her gorgeous. Remember that Gypsy likes to maintain that she and Ken were not talking or back together while she was with Ryan. I mean, she wasn't with Ryan for long while she was free, so she's maintaining that she was faithful during her marriage before her divorce, but other people suspect otherwise. Gypsy's man messaged Nina to come to the bar that he works at for drinks. Nina declined, he got mad, and blocked Nina, and Gypsy got mad. Nina's been posting a lot of videos about the situation. Apparently, Gypsy's boyfriend Ken was going on live and talking about Nina, saying that she's obsessed, just making her look bad. But honestly, to me, it seems like Ken was being shady. Nina called him out on it, and now he's backtracking, and Gypsy sounds jealous and bitter. I'm so sorry, but I feel like Gypsy Rose Blanchard should not be on social media. In my opinion, she keeps embarrassing herself. Now, I'll argue and say that Gypsy can stay on social media because it is entertaining. Nina claimed that Gypsy had cheated on her ex-husband. However, Gypsy had refuted these claims on several occasions. Approximately when Nina went live to discuss Ken and Gypsy, the former prisoner, <laughs> Jip Jip, uh, sent a message to the beauty influencer. Gypsy requested that Nina not post screenshots of their conversation, but Nina informed her followers of what transpired in another video. This all escalated very quickly, and it makes me question how accessible Gypsy is. I feel like anyone could just go and message her. There was a video that I had made back on 11-8 about Ken commenting and I was saying it wasn't the real Ken. Now, it actually was the real Ken. So I got on live, everybody kept saying, someone's in your live, someone's in your live. This was who was in the live. And this is proof that she was in fact, in the live. Because Gypsy has given attention to this TikToker and, you know, Ken has given her attention as well, it's gotten way worse. Gypsy sent a lot of messages to Nina saying that she feels bad for Nicholas, the boyfriend that she had, who she convinced to kill her mother. She stated, though, that she feels as though he should have his fair day in court. Gypsy Rose herself messaged me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, before I say what she messaged me and said, she requested that I do not share the screenshots, but I am free to discuss what she spoke on in my messages. But one thing that I think is very important for me to say is that there was a lot of accountability in the DMs that she sent me. Surprisingly, not what I was expecting from Gypsy. She touched on a lot of other things, and I'm telling you, it's a lot of messages, so I really have to go through it. I am really shocked. Uh, about her messages. Although Gypsy was asking Nina to keep their messages private, of course they ended up going public. 
Here's some of Gypsy's message. She writes, Hi Nina, first of all, I'd like to say that this is a private message, so I do not want that to be made public. If you could keep it between you and I, I'd greatly appreciate that. If you talk about the knowledge I'm going to share with you in a video, please say so, or if you want to say it's by me, that's okay, just don't share this message. So clearly Gypsy did not want this out. She starts off by saying that she's not pregnant and that Ryan and her were not planning on getting a divorce at that point, I guess when the story started to leak. But she claims that Ryan and I had gone to the hospital because Ryan was having breathing issues and coughing a lot and he was sick. So we went to urgent care and they sent him to get a chest x-ray. She says whoever said that I was checking on a fetus totally made that up and that Ryan had acute bronchitis. She goes on to speak about someone named Rachel, writing on to the topic of Rachel, I understand that she feels hurt about me uninviting her to my release party and keeping a distance from her. As you probably know, we had a falling out two years ago or before I got out and I was going to invite her and actually did invite her to my release party, but there's some bad blood between Rachel and my stepmom and honestly, it would have been very awkward and I uninvited her after reflecting on the situation. Now, Rachel was actually Gypsy Rose's ex-best friend, but they had a falling out. Gypsy says I would contact her after I got out, but but then I had mutual friends with her letting me know that she was talking crap about my husband and making fun of my husband and not only that but linked up with Fancy which was a huge betrayal to me because everybody knows that Fancy is my biggest hater. I couldn't forgive Rachel for running to Fancy and siding with Fancy not over simply being uninvited from my release party. Rachel has always used me for money while I was in prison. I took care of her and bought her hygiene. I bought her cigarettes. I made sure she had everything she needed in prison and while we're sitting on a picnic table in prison she looked at me and told me one day you're gonna be so famous and you're gonna buy me a house and you're gonna buy me a car statements like that made me feel all i was to her was famous gypsy blanchard and not just gypsy her friend anyway there's just a lot that needs to be unpacked with that past friendship and i don't like getting into the drama and now i'm on parole and i can't talk to her because i'm not allowed to talk to other felons okay moving on to the new t first of all yes ryan does know that ken and i follow each other on social media secondly i understand if they portrayed it like i cheated on ryan in the documentary but however they did not include the part of the conversation when I explained why I called Ken a week before I got married. I want to let him know myself that I was going to get married out of respect for him because Ken and I had been communicating. Ken and I never had a relationship behind Ryan's back. It was just a phone call and now granted it wasn't the right thing to do. She said I don't always make the right decisions but it was weighing on my heart at the time. Fast forward to now a lot of people have their exes on social media. Ken was a very big part of my life. He was my first love. He was my first engagement and we're still on good terms. Do we talk? No, but am I still close with his mother? Yes. Now, Gypsy goes on to really explain herself to Nina and I'll put some of these messages on the screen, but there's so much here that it's just, it's too hard. It's too much. I mean, even at this point though, she's even saying like, do her and Ken talk? I mean, that changed really quickly. Here are some takes from Reddit. This person writes that Gypsy divorced Ryan and claimed a restraining order super quickly after after this, it seems like Gypsy gets restraining orders a lot and she's spiraling and the backlash is getting to her. Nina was given far too much ammo when it comes to Gypsy Rose and it really backfired on her. Clearly, Gypsy's confessions did not uh, really, you know, side with Nina and um, they ended up beefing it out on TikTok, which led to the quote from Gypsy. Oh, honey, I am so not threatened by you. My man wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole which I didn't even think that was relevant. I guess Ken has been out here lurking on social media, so this is how Gypsy is going to defend her stands. Oh, honey, I am so not threatened by you. My man wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole. You're just mad because I have a Chad. And last time I checked, you don't have a man. So looks like you're the one that's panini pressed. Call a spade a spade, honey. Keep making content. Okay, first off, what is a Chad? Comment below, what's a Chad? And do you guys have one of those? Is Ken considered a Chad? I don't know if I want one. But Panini Pressed was new for me, and I have to say, I, I kind of love it. I mean, to be Panini Pressed, what does that mean? I love a good Panini. So, um, yeah. I'll be panini pressed any time. But there's a content creator named Fancy who we heard about earlier. And it looks like Gypsy Rose is considering suing Fancy for defamation. Seems like Gypsy isn't doing well at handling some of the backlash. And I don't know if 
you know, going the legal route is the best way to handle it. Now, Fancy's name is actually April Johns, and it looks like the family is suing April for several alleged offenses, including fraud, breach of contract, and defamation. Wow, I mean a lot. Gypsy and her parents met April while Gypsy was serving a 10-year prison sentence following the death of her mother. Looks like April runs a production company called Mad Ginger Entertainment and offered her services to produce media projects about Gypsy's life and case. The relationship reportedly soured after Gypsy's family claimed that April failed to secure any media projects or produce any marketable content. However, April purportedly continued to create and post content about Gypsy against the family's wishes. This report writes that in late 2017, Gypsy and her parents signed a life rights option agreement with April Johns. As part of the agreement, Gypsy's family provided April with access and copies to evidence and documents surrounding Gypsy's life and case, which also included crime scene photos, court transcripts, family photos, and much more. Quote, for the next two years plus, plaintiffs Gypsy, Rod, and Christy diligently worked with defendant April and had countless conversations and interviews with her regarding their lives and circumstances of the murder. During this time, April purported to be skilled and experienced enough to perform her side of the contract. So it seems like a super fan who like pitched themselves as this documentarian, but really wasn't that, but just like got time to hang out and ask questions about everything pertaining to Gypsy while producing trash social media that Gypsy and her family don't even want to use. Here's Gypsy's half sister talking about her interactions with April, aka Fancy, on as known on social media. So we tried to do, I think it was a documentary or a TV show or something with her, but she was very unprofessional. So we cut ties, didn't want anything to do with her. Once we did that, she went on a rampage of um, saying my mom's worse than Dee Dee, that Gypsy was gonna murder me on my wedding day because she's jealous of me. Um, I have a screenshot. Like, honestly, I just wanna bury her so far down a rabbit hole. And I honestly think if I dig enough, I can make her look so fucking bad. She's putting out articles and stuff, calling herself a family friend, um, saying a bunch of stuff that is not true. Um, I have her mugshots as well. Gypsy's family is claiming that April went on to post about Gypsy's case in explicit detail online through comments, videos, podcasts, and interviews. A lot of this content was monetized and April was getting the checks while Gypsy's family got nothing. The family also claimed their agreement was that she would document and talk about Gypsy's life story, not try to paint her as a bad person or them as terrible people, and that's exactly what she's done. April wrote on Facebook, I'm upset obsessed with the fact that a murderer and her lying con artist stepmother are conning the world one paycheck at a time. Fancy aka April Johns goes on to claim that she's being stalked. Gypsy's family alleges that April is falsely accusing them in social media videos of stalking her and encouraging others to stalk and harass her. The lawsuit that Gypsy's family has filed reads that she has stated that she is in fear that someone will take her out. She presents no evidence to back up the assertions that she's either being stalked or that the plaintiffs are encouraging such behavior. So here's another example of one of Gypsy's restraining orders because she has filed one against April John. Although Gypsy and her family are making some pretty damning claims about Fancy, aka April Johns, when they went to court, their lawyer did not hold it up because uh, she actually walked away with all charges dismissed, which I think is pretty shocking if like the family had all of this evidence. I mean, that's a, that's a lot. So uh, she was pretty happy to hear about this. Here's a clip of her talking about what happened in that courtroom. I wanted to come on and let everybody know all charges were dismissed. Uh, the judge was not happy with him, um, Mr. Shanfield. He was not happy that he brought this to his courthouse um, because he could not, for the life of him, figure out why this would be the venue that they would choose. Um, he made Stanfield argue that point, and without me having to say anything, he dismissed the charges. In lighter news, Gypsy is talking a little bit more about her... Um 
I guess her dating history. She talked about uh, kissing more girls than boys. I mean, it makes sense because she was in a female prison. Gypsy has been putting out new episodes of her, well, you know, Lifetime's putting out new episodes of her show. She's not really doing that much, but she's there filming her life and the drama that comes with it. Although I think Gypsy is, I think she's straight. I'm not going to make that assumption, but she went on her show to say that she's kissed more girls than guys. I mean, I guess you've got to get that experience one way or another. And before prison, she was wheelchair bound not not that you can't like hook up if you're in a wheelchair but you know she wasn't getting out from under her mother anytime soon for a long time i actually kind of like question like my own sexuality because as a teenager or a preteen i felt that i was attracted to girls and i got to experiment with that in prison i think i've kissed more girls than i have guys I had such big fears that I was like, what if I'm just not gonna like sex? But she said that now she's experimenting a lot and she's a freak. She also credited her then husband, Ryan Anderson, for making her feel really confident under the sheets. She said that she has a lot of scars and she feels a little insecure about her body, but he always made her feel like everything was gonna be okay. I'm actually pretty confident that Gypsy is doing just fine making up for lost time, especially because since she's gone out of prison, she's kind of been behaving like, not like I want to say like she's behaving like a teenager, but she's going through the high school, college, kind of growing up um, waves very quickly. But because the show is out and Ryan Anderson is featured in it, he's doing his fair share of press as well. I have a feeling that Gypsy's been kissing on more girls than Ryan has, but um, he said it was like she was here one day and the next day she was gone. She wanted to be married and now she doesn't. It's just crazy how it all happened like that. <laughs> he, he definitely did not speak like that, but imagine the drama. It was like she was here one day and the next she was gone. But he did say it was cool that she got so many followers so fast. It was definitely eye-opening to see how fast it just blew up. It was shocking. I just couldn't believe it. That's when we realized, oh wow, people are invested. That was a shocking surprise the first weekend she got out. Ryan claims that he's still healing from everything and still blindsided, but it doesn't seem like he's going to check into Gypsy's life anytime soon. They're probably going to speak through lawyers because she has that restraining order and she's with Ken. And I don't think he wants anything to do with him. Gypsy invited, of course, Ken to be a part of Life After Lockup. Did you get to film with him at all? Have you and him had any conversations along the way? He doesn't want to see me. He doesn't want to catch me in public. Although Ryan's life has changed drastically because he lost his wife, he only had her for a couple of months and the fridge was a little too packed up, which she actually claims was not true, but she does troll him on that. Either way, he's still a teacher. He's still out here living his life, but I'm sure it's really hard like going back to your life now that you've been defined by a marriage that frankly did not last in the real world long at all. You didn't really know that she was continuing correspondence Correct. with Ken. You were not aware of that? Not at the time, no. When did you find out? After she left. Did she tell you? Yes and no. What does that mean? I mean, like, after I was conf confronted, I confronted her about it, and she told me the truth. Yeah. So someone else told you? Uh, you know, I, I saw them get got together that, you know, like, I saw a picture and all that. Yeah. And it was, a lot happened. A lot happened. I can only imagine how difficult this is being in the public eye right. and I have to find out that type of information as it pertains to your significant other in a public manner as opposed to not just your significant other, your wife. Right, yeah. You know, not just not just a girlfriend, your actual wife. Yeah, it was it was it was damaging. Now I don't think Ryan is sitting at home moping with the diet Dr. Pepper. I think he is out there sitting on his front porch with the Diet Dr. Pepper and talking to the girls on his Instagram DMs. <laughs> I love a Diet Dr. Pepper. This article reads that Gypsy Rose Blanchard's ex Ryan reveals just how many women are sliding into his DMs. He said, I definitely have a lot. It's mostly women. It's a weird thing to process. It's nice to see it does boost your ego. He said, I just wanted the attention of one woman originally. To get all this other attention, it's different. And it is interesting that he probably is like a bachelor out here like i would love to see him on something like <laughs> like 90 day fiance it's kind of giving 90 day fiance you are now single my friend i imagine that inbox is full it is. are you are you 
curious? I see all this attention from other females and I'm getting flooded. But honestly, I only ever really wanted the attention of one woman. What does your future look like? They're like, the next Bachelor needs to be Ryan. I don't even know what to think of that. Is it fair to say that you are still very much in love with Gypsy Rose? I, I think, honestly, I'm in love with the girl that I fell in love with. And I still covet that girl that I fell in love with. And I wish that she was there. Best to the luck of Ryan and his hope to find love. I'd love to see him on like Love is Blind or uh, nine, again, 90 Day Fiance. That would be chef's kiss. Uh, I would love to see that. But let's go ahead and open a P.O. Box package. It's from Silver Screen Sense. And it looks like they are based in California. Oh my gosh, what a nice like envelope with like a nice sticker too. So professional, we love to see it. Wow, so pretty. Oh, and an owl. Cute. Hi Sloan, I've been a fan of your channel since you first started. Your content is always engaging and informative. Thank you. I also wanted to share my candle venture with you and your fans. It is movie and TV themed scented candles made with 100% soy and I use cotton wicks for a uh, I guess a clear burn. Ah, oh, nice. You and your followers can enjoy 10% off using the code Sloan10 until July 8th. It's been, so go ahead and check that out. I'll list the code below. Um, it's been a long day, so let's relax, burn a unique scented candle, and let's get into it from Rena. Thank you, Rena. I will list everything below. Let's go ahead and check out these candles. I'm so excited. I love a good candle. If you guys know me. And I have a P.O. Box address listed below. This one's called Tortured Poets Department. <gasps> Taylor Swift coded. We love that. Oh, oh my gosh. That is so good. Oh, it's like, like perfumey, but still very fresh and kind of like earthy, but like in a nice light earthy, not like a musky way. It's so good. Now this one's, oh gosh, I'm going to butcher, butcher the name. Hukula? 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 Cafe? I probably like, this is like a movie. It literally has like Adam Sandler. Is that like Drew Barrymore? Who is that? I actually don't know. So bad with movies, but like Hakula, Hukulu, Hukulu Cafe. Um, looks so cute though. I love the art. Like I'm such a beach person. It's giving me beach vibes. I was also in the, sa uh, the, the sun <laughs> the last two days. So hopefully I have a little tan. Mmm. This one's like kind of like fresh grassy kind of. But then florally too. Mm, so good. Wow. I'm super impressed with this and I love the ideas behind it. Like the, it's just so cute. Like I just like don't even want to burn this. Like I, I know people are going to come over and they're like, oh my gosh, I love Taylor Swift and that album. And I love this album, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you again. Use my code Sloan10 for 10% off and I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys.